In this step, we're going to take the tree that we've imported and set up, and we're going to feed that into the foliage tool and get that sprayed around our level to make it look really cool. So let's jump into that. So the first thing I want to do is actually just get rid of this single tree that we put in there, because we don't need it. If you get left with a horrible smudgy shadow, you can just kind of look away from the shadow, and when you look back, <gasps> where's it gone? Magic. It's gone. Okay. So we've done that, and then what we need to do is just feed in the tree to the foliage tool. So let's open the foliage tool. And once you've got your foliage tool open, what you need to do, first of all, is just turn off. So mouse over your grass and turn that off, get rid of the tick. And that will mean that when we start painting trees, we won't also start painting grass. If you've got them both ticked, they'll both appear at once, which we don't want. Okay, now we're gonna go into our geometry folder and we're going to drag our tree into the foliage, like so. And then I'm gonna make sure that my paint density is set to one because I kind of like that for the tree. And then I'm gonna start making some changes to the settings. So the first thing I want to change, I believe, is the density. And I'm finding at the moment that I like a value of about four for this. Obviously you don't want to have as many trees as you do clumps of grass. Uh, the radius, I'm going to set this, so this is kind of the minimum distance between foliage instances. So we don't want these trees to intersect at any point. So I'm going to put in a value of 600 here, which means I don't want them to be any closer than about 6 meters together. And then as for the scaling, I want this to be randomized like I did with the grass. So I'm going to start at a size of 0.6, I think. And I'm going to allow them to go up to about 1.7, get some nice variation in there. Okay, this time I am also going to use Z offset and I'm going to set a minimum of minus 40, I think, and a max of minus 10. And the minimum number is bigger than the maximum number because we're working on the negative because I want them to be able to go underneath the ground a little bit. And that's just so that when we're painting up the hill, you can't, it won't float in midair. Okay, what I don't want to do is align to normal, because again, when we're painting up the hill, if the hill is in, where am I, where's my camera? The hill's in this direction, then the trees will stick out like that, which we don't want, we want the trees to keep going upright. So do not align to normal, and that will do it. We're pretty much happy with that. I do not want to enable density scaling on this one because I don't want the trees to disappear at any point. I want them to always be there. Okay, so I think it's now time to paint these trees around our level. So what I'll do first of all, is make sure I can see where I'm painting and then I'm just going to click every so often and you can see the first thing I'll need to do is compile some shaders which is fine I love compiling shaders it's my favorite so I'm just going to place some beautiful trees and you can see the LODs taking effect as it builds the shaders so I want to just put some cool trees in. do not want to put any on my uh, well, let's get a few more trees actually looks quite sparse a few more in like that oh yeah a few more up there I think on the sandy looking area very nice very nice okay we'll have a few coming in here I think uh, yeah around the bottom there so what I'm trying to do is just kind of encase my entire level really with these beautiful pine trees like that and bring those in there I think we can have a few just there uh, and I'm just going to put some along the top as well, just to kind of change the, the boring outline, the boring silhouette. So I'm just going to try and put a few more in like that. So yeah, up here too. A few can go there. I'm going to have some going along here. Oh, I have one there, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll go around here as well, like so. And then what I'll also do is I just want it to look like, I'm just going to size my brush up a bit for this, like there's a bit more of a pine forest going on behind the cabin. So I'm just going to drop some trees in there like that. Okay, so that's just me doing it very quickly. So let's just turn this foliage tool off. And what I'm now going to do, because as I've said in a few earlier steps, this has been crashing on me like a bitch. So I'm going to click on save all so that I don't have to do this another time. 
And at this stage, you can place trees wherever you want, wherever you think it looks good, and whatever you're happy with. Um, but once that's saved, what I'm going to do is just press play and have a look. And you can see that my screen looks very, very blurry because I've turned the quality right down because I'm now kind of getting to the limits of what my laptop will support. But once we've um, built the lighting later and done a few other bits and bobs, it, it should get a little bit better. But we can now see that this, this kind of whole level looks a lot more interesting to look at. So as I, as I run around now, there's trees for me to run around. And the cool thing as well is that they all have collisions on them because that collision mesh, they do not have collisions on them. Okay, so the realization that collisions aren't on reminds me that we need to turn that on. So we're going to go back into our foliage tool, select the, um, the trees from here. And we're just going to scroll down in the settings and we're looking for this collision preset. So it's set to no collision. So we're just going to set it to block all. And now if we just go back in and play, I'll just run towards a tree. And hopefully if Jeebus loves me, I will not run through the tree. There we go. So that turns collision on. So the collision's in there, but you need to remember to turn it on for your foliage as well. So that will do it for this step. We've got our trees in. We've got our grass in, although you can see that um, you you can't see my grass because I've I've um, I've just hidden it for now so that I don't get any more crashes. But we've got grass, we've got trees. The next thing we'll do is we'll drop some rocks in there as well, just using the foliage tool. And after that, we'll move on to something a bit different. So I'll see you in the next step where we'll throw some rocks around. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went, and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.